Before we delve into the Lewis structures and understand those a little bit better, let's take a look at the difference between ionic and covalent bonding. At this point, we probably have a pretty good idea, but I want to make it crystal clear. So let's say that uh, we have some definitions here. Let's go over the definitions. We have ionic bonding is the donation of one or more electron from one atom to another. So when we're seeing a donation or when one atom donates an electron to another atom, then we call that ionic bonding because what happens is that, for example, here we have sodium and chlorine. Sodium will donate an electron to chlorine. So sodium will be minus one electron, meaning it's now going to be cation or positive ion. Chlorine is going to gain an electron, so now it becomes a negative ion. And positive ions and negative ions will attract each other. And so that's the mechanization of the bonding process there. When we have covalent bonding, that means they're sharing electrons. So one atom is not necessarily giving electrons to another, they're sharing electrons on a temporary basis. In other words, one atom will give electrons to the other atom temporarily, and then that atom will then give electrons back to the first atom, back and forth, back and forth. So in a way, there's still this unevenness of electrons, therefore there'll be a positively and a negatively end to the, to the bonding, and so therefore there'll still be an electrical attraction, but not because one atom donates an electron to another, they just take temporary custody, so to speak, of the electrons and share the electrons on a temporary basis. So we'll see that in just a moment, what that looks like. So sodium, if we draw the Lewis symbol for sodium, we get uh, Na with a single dot because there's only one valence electron in the second energy level for sodium. And chlorine, the symbol for chlorine looks like this. Chlorine, it has seven valence electrons. Notice that it has a space in one of its orbitals. Sodium has one electron in its outermost energy level, doesn't hang on to it very strongly, and this electron will end up being donated to the chlorine. When that happens, sodium becomes therefore a positively charged ion, chlorine becomes a negatively charged ion. So this then turns into sodium with a positive charge, and then we end up with chlorine now having eight valence electrons, but the price of that, that is now a negatively charged ion. And so, since they are now oppositely charged, they will attract each other and form a single ionic bond. And so what that looks like then is we end up with sodium positively charged, chlorine negatively charged, showing all its atoms like that. So that's how we show, show it as an ionic compound, and that's the symbolism we use. Now later on you will see when we use the Lewis structure symbolism, it looks a little bit different than that, and we'll get to that in a moment. Now we talk about carbon and oxygen. So we have one carbon, which contains only four electrons in its valence shell. We have an oxygen, which contains six electrons in its val valence shell like this. And we have another oxygen, again, six electrons in its valence shell. And they then get combined in some fashion. Now notice that all three of these atoms would like to have eight valence electrons. But there's not enough electrons to go around to form the kind of bonds where they can each have eight, although they can have eight on a temporary basis. For example, if carbon, this carbon atom, gives two of the two of its electrons to oxygen on a temporary basis, it would then have eight valence electrons. If the same carbon also gives the other two electrons to this oxygen, it would have eight valence electrons, but it doesn't want to give it to them on a permanent basis. It says, I will do that to you if part of the time you give me two of yours and you give me two of yours so that I can have eight valence electrons part of the time, and even though you'll be short for part of the time. So what happens is the following. We can then see that part of the time you'll end up with a situation like this. We have an oxygen with eight electrons, carbon with none, another oxygen with eight. And then part of the time you'll end up with a carbon that has eight electrons, and this oxygen with only four, and this oxygen with only four. And it'll go back and forth and back and forth on a continual basis where electrons are being shared part of the time so that each atom has the opportunity to have a full set of valence electrons and then none and valence electrons and none and so forth or having a partial set and a full set and a partial set and a full set. And so it's kind of going back and forth like that. So in the end, what we can then see is that there's going to be a sharing mechanism. So it turns out 
that there will be a total of two electrons, or I should say a total of four electrons shared over here, and a total of four electrons shared over there. So the ultimate way of writing that is to say, okay, we have a carbon that's going to share a total of four electrons with an oxygen, and another four electrons with the other oxygen, like that. So we have oxygen here, we have oxygen there, and then these two oxygens will have an additional four electrons like so, and four electrons like so. So basically, you can think of it in terms of this oxygen will have eight electrons part of the time, this oxygen will have eight electrons part of the time, and this carbon will have eight electrons part of the time. And this kind of sharing arrangement is considered a covalent bond. Covalent means uh, co means together, valent means valence electrons, so they're sharing the valence electrons together. So here we have an ionic bond where an electron is simply donated and the two ions become opposite in charge and they attra are attracted to each other. Here there is a sharing mechanism taking place where electrons go back and forth between the orbitals of the atoms and so temporarily they each will have eight valence electrons part of time and that is kind of a sharing mechanism which causes the, the atoms to be or the ions to be bonded together through electrical forces. So in the end the mechanization of combining atoms into compounds, into molecules like that, is caused by the differentiation of the charges which causes them to be electrically attracted to each other. Here it's ionic, there's covalent, but in the end the mechanism is relatively the same. And so we realize that in no circumstance do you ever have a 100% ionic bond setup or 100% covalent bond setup. So in essence, there's no such thing as a 100% ionic bond or 100% covalent bond. It just really means that which one shares electrons more of the time, which one shares electrons less of the time. So this would be mostly ionic, this would be mostly covalent, but there's to every bond situation, there is both the properties of ionic and covalent bonding taking place. So we can say mostly covalent, mostly ionic. In essence, we call this an ionic bond, a covalent bond, and we know in the back of our mind that there's a little bit of both properties in every bond no matter what. So hopefully that clears it up. Now you see the difference between ionic and covalent bonding. You see ionic is the donation of electrons, covalent is the sharing of electrons. And there we go, now ready to go look at some Lewis structures.